Well, I think it's uh, gone in the days of predictability would, would be my overall take. Um, we're seeing you know, incredible parity. We're seeing competitive games. We're seeing debutantes um, making noise, powers going out of the tournament. I mean, I think to date it's, it's probably been the least predictable tournament we've seen. Um, but overall, I mean, exciting, bigger fans, high attendance, had incredible television ratings. So I think from top to bottom, this has already proven to be a very successful tournament. I mean, I think, the, you know, ultimately, it's, football's entertainment, you know, and, and you want to see, you want to see goals, but you also want to see a game that's back and forth. And so now you're seeing this higher level of competitiveness. There's, there's no gimmies. There's no, a team just shows up and rolls out and it's 7-0. It's, um, teams are going to have to be better. And I love it because it's this concept, you know, of iron sharpens iron. If, if everyone else is getting better, it forces you to get better. And then you're, that's what causes this, this domino effect in terms of growth. So I think that's just really exciting. It's exciting for the fans. It's inspirational. You see a team like Haiti. You see a team like Morocco, Portugal. Those players are going to be heroes back in their hometown because they're in this tournament and they're, they're playing well and, and they're showcasing their talents. Certainly, I think we're seeing um, you know, a, lot, a lot of teams giving less space on, on the pitch. There's a lot more compactness front to back, side to side, um, more, more space on the flank space because we're so compact centrally, which now lends itself to seeing you know, more crosses, uh, more corner kick set piece opportunities. And you know, I think now, I mean, I think the, the level of goals we're scoring off of set pieces, um, I, th I see that increasing. So you know, take away the space central, more flank play, um, gonna lead to more corner kicks, and we're seeing a lot more goals in that regard. So I think it's just, um, you know, it's just overall a, a commitment, a commitment to keeping tight lines. Less, we're seeing less numbers of lines being broken. Um, which again lends itself to the fact that it's just very compact and tight out there. You know, I just think overall the, the level of organization, defensive sophistication um, is making these games a lot more competitive. I think game goals are coming out of transition, so now how do we limit those transition moments? I um, mean, Japan is a perfect example of a team that's highly organized, sits in their, in their block, five in the back, and then when they win it, you know, they transition and they score multiple goals. Um, they just, you know, it, so that's, that's again taking advantage of what the game, game gives us. We're seeing, you know, countries and nations, federations investing in domestic leagues um, springing up all over the place. I think the investment that, you know, you take a team like Morocco, um, they weren't on the radar in 2019. Now they're going to a knockout round. We're seeing uh, Jamaica advancing from the Caribbean. So that has to lend itself to the fact that, you know, countries are now investing more in their players, in the development of the game. And that's why we're going to start to see that there's going to be, you know, we talk about the gap closing. There's going to be even less of a gap as we continue to evolve the women's game globally between, you know, the perennial giants of the game and the countries that are now making a, a name for themselves on the world stage. The opening match in Auckland at Eden Park, the city I grew up in, uh, the cultural ceremony, just seeing the two cultures coming together, uh, New Zealand, winning the match, the first ever New Zealand team, Oceania team, to win a World Cup match, men or women. That was goosebumps moment forever, bawling my eyes out. Uh, Australia, match two, sold out stadium, biggest ever women's football match in the country, incredible game, atmosphere, there's been so many moments and I feel so privileged to be able to be part of this and to be going to these matches and to be part of this massively momentous moment in time. It means that what we're doing every day away from this World Cup, the hard slog that we're doing every other day away from the stadiums and the bright lights and the big flashiness of a World Cup, it's working. Like every day we're grinding, working with our member associations. There are amazing people all over the world who are developing women's football passionately. And to see the results at this tournament, it's like a, it's like a reward. And I feel so proud of what FIFA has done to build it to this point and to get it to this point where there are millions and millions of people around the world tuning in to watch it 
as well as the millions who are filling the stadium in more than 200 territories. That's global. That's global. Um, and it's incredible. Our athletes are being showcased. Our sport is being showcased. These two incredible host countries are being showcased. The cultures. I mean, how I can't even remember the number of conversations that I've had until today with people who have come from overseas who have commented about how special it is to have a welcome to country uh, in First Nations and in Māori when the teams are coming onto the field. People think that is so special and meaningful, and it is, and it's so unique. And how amazing that these two beautiful cultures are being shown literally to the entire globe. And I don't think there's any other platform that could showcase the cultures like that in such a special way. And that's so meaningful, especially having grown up in this region. Yeah.